Winter is definitely here. It was cold Thursday morning. When I went down to fire up that stove, I could feel it in the house already. When I went out to fire up the 64, I thought for sure I'd find a dead mouse in the trap. But no such luck. I made sure to get the trap out of the truck before I let the dogs hop in so they can go with me to Jigs to pick up some parts for mom and dad's 55 Chevy. We need to go in and pick up the brake parts, the power steering parts, and I would have rather gone by myself, but my two associates weren't taking no for an answer. So anyway, we run into Jegs to go see Uncle Terry, who by the time I got there, was already in the back of the store, gathering up my cart full of goodies for the 55. Frick and Frack waited outside in the truck until I got done in the store. Luckily, it didn't take too long for Uncle Terry to get me all checked out, and then he rolled all the parts outside and helped me load them up in the truck. And then it was time to turn and burn back to the shop, and Kenny Powers was already busy wire wheeling the 55's headers, and he busted out his spray can with some new adaption he's got there to make a spray like a gun. I managed to get back to the shop just in time to catch Paige Ann. Well, more so the dogs just in time to catch Paige Ann, especially Shivy, who loves to jump on Paige every time Paige opens that side door. And Paige wanted to file a complaint. Get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. Don't add to this clutch. Oh. 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 Mom's gonna see that and she's getting cold. By this time, Jeremy had showed up to the shop and he starts unloading all the parts out of the 64. And I'm hoping that he remembered to go down to Mark's and get my rod bolts. Well, did you get my rod bolts? Yeah. I went down and picked company in the nuts. Jeremy made it down there extra early this morning and he delights in finding Mark unprepared for him. Ghost town. What the? Service! What? I come in it's here and see fucking tumbleweeds rolling around. Oh, well, just a, a dead customer in the corner. Looks like they had a car in there. Rotted, oh, just a skeleton left. Well, thank you for the rod bolts. Yeah, not my pleasure. Somehow that second 400 small block short block had two damaged rod bolts in it. I don't know how that happened, but luckily Mark was able to find two replacement rod bolts for a 400 small block at Watson Rupel Performance and he was nice enough to pick them up for us. And that was the final thing I needed in order to assemble the rest of this short block. So I went ahead and tapped that last connecting rod and piston down in the block and installed the last rod cap so we can go ahead and torque down all the rod main bolts and finish this thing off. While I'm working on that 400, Jeremy went ahead and starts trying to install the new power steering gear box on the frame of the 55. And he's got the new tilt wheel steering column mocked up in the car. Kenny's got the headers all hung up and they're drying out, but unfortunately, no one can locate my digital torque wrench. At one point, I had three of them around here, but they've all walked off. So Jeremy breaks out his torque wrench from about 1927 and we finish up the short block. So we've made decent progress on the engine so far this morning, but we've run into some roadblocks with the new power steering gearbox. All right, so where are we at on this thing? I got the column mocked up. We tried to fit the gearbox. This frame, you got to notch just a little bit out for the gearbox. And then we got to figure out what we're going to do about the clutch lever because with the new power steering gearbox, the clutch lever is interfering with the face of the gearbox. Right. So I either Z the brackets over or we put a hydraulic clutch in it. So I already called Uncle Terry at Jegs and he's digging into that right now to see if there's a kit to switch this from a mechanical clutch to a hydraulic. And if that's the case, that's probably what I'm going to do because that'll be easier for dad to push down anyway. Yeah. So what are you doing this weekend? You're taking dad to go pick up a new truck? Yes. Not a new truck, but a new to him truck. His bean money has already burnt a hole in his pocket. It's gone. And he's already spent it. Yes. It's a 1980 Scottsdale. Yeah. It seems to be pretty decent. That two-tone blue one? Yeah. Colorado, I guess is where it's No, it came from North Dakota, but oh. it's in Indiana right now. So are you going to do a little uh, maintenance on your truck before you leave? Yes. You going to clean out the truck bed by any chance? Yes. Because there's, uh, there's some questionable things there in the bed of your truck. I already got rid of the dead rabbit. <laughs> Friday morning, Vicki and I get up and we start packing up for our trip down to Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uncle Bucko rolls in just before we left, and so did Allison. She's got some shipping she needs to do out in the shop this morning, and Vicki came out to say goodbye to everybody before we leave. 
Kenny got started pulling the original master cylinder off the firewall just before Vicky and I loaded up. We're ready. What are the directions? I helped Vicky get the directions mapped out and then we hit the road. 70 to 270 around Columbus to 71 South, straight down through Cincinnati. Our plan is to drive down to Bowling Green tonight and get a hotel room. But on the way down, Vicky wants to stop in Louisville and see some Christmas lights in a cave of all places. They call it Lights Under Louisville, and it's actually in an old 1930s limestone quarry, or a mine, whatever you want to call it. But it's big enough that you can drive through this thing, and I mean with a bus. Now I've got to admit, Lights Under Louisville was really good. Probably one of the best Christmas lights displays I've ever seen. We got stuck in a little bit of traffic in Louisville during rush hour, but made it down to Bowling Green before dinner. Vicki decided she wanted to stay at the La Quinta right across the street from Cracker Barrel so we could go over there in the morning for breakfast. And although it's cold, we're not dealing with this nasty weather like they are up in New York, but we're about to have our own problems regardless. What are you doing, squirrel? Down, 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 down. History of remotes. Okay, Calm down like that. Pencil button. Oh, YouTube. What are you doing? I was trying to pull up YouTube. And she's having a fit. A new version of the app is available. Launch current version of app will update to latest version. Update. Launch. Tap. Launch button. Tap. Three of the letters. At this point, Vicky and I are both about ready to have a complete meltdown. I don't know that there's anything on YouTube worth all the frustration we're dealing with right now. Why can't she just be quiet and let me type? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've asked myself that a million times. Oh my god. I can't take it. See, at home, once you type old, it just goes old man's garage. Here, this is old McDonald had a farm. <laughs> okay, I give up. Just stop. Just turn it off. It's fine. Oh, there it is. What did you do? Old man's garage. Search results for old man's garage. Bro, it's 55 Chevy time. We get started on a new winter project upgrading everything. The old man's garage. New. 85k views. One day ago. 25 minutes. 3 seconds. 1 of 20 or more. Oh my god. 
So we settle in for the night, and the next morning we get up early, get our showers, and get ready to go to breakfast. I planned this perfect. Look. She's so proud of herself that she picked a hotel right next to Cracker Barrel. We drive across the street and put our name in with a maitre d', and Vicky does a little bit of shopping, both in the store and online. I have already seen what I'm gonna get. What you gonna get? Pretty ornament. It's coming home with me. So evidently she's got an ornament picked out, but she's also doing some shopping on Facebook Marketplace. That shirt I showed you was cute, so I went ahead and ordered it, and it's it's deferring right to PayPal, so I'm just gonna put in your PayPal information. <laughs> I made the mistake of giving her my PayPal password last week, and I'm regretting it already. So with Christmas lights, breakfast, and a little bit of shopping out of the way, it's time for me to go do something I want to do. Now, if you're a really big Chevrolet guy or a sports car guy, you know you can't go through Bowling Green, Kentucky without visiting the National Corvette Museum. And since we've got a few hours to burn today before they're ready for us down at ATM, this is a perfect opportunity to finally get to visit the museum I've wanted to see for a long time. We've driven past this thing four or five times in the last few years, but I've never had time to stop or we came through town in the middle of the night and they weren't open. But this time, I'm not gonna allow the opportunity to slip by. We checked out the Corvette video game for a few minutes and checked out this beautiful 61 sitting on the rotisserie and then got our tickets to go through the museum. And as far as I'm concerned, the Corvette Museum ranks right up there at the top with the Henry Ford Museum and the Air Force Museum I've been to in Dayton, Ohio. All the exhibits in here are absolutely phenomenal. And they start off with what really started the Corvette craze prior to 1953 with the Crosby and the MG. And then 15 feet into the museum, I learned something I never knew. The very first Corvette cross flag emblem included an American flag. Trying to sell a two seat sports car with an inline six cylinder engine was tough. But thankfully, a Belgian born engineer named Zora Arcus Duntoff came along. And between Duntoff and Ed Cole, the small block Chevrolet was born. And by 1956, Corvette sales and performance began to skyrocket. And of course, the styling that Harley Earl brought to the table for the newer body styles, the 1956 through 1962 Corvettes became highly desirable. And that's when the small block Chevy high performance parts really started to take off. One thing that the Corvettes had problems with was cornering with carburetors. And looking for any advantage they could find in road racing, Chevrolet introduced mechanical fuel injection in the 1957 Corvettes. All first-gen Corvettes from 1953 to 1962 had solid rear axles, but in 1963, with a split-window Corvette, Chevrolet introduced independent rear suspension and an all-new body, originally designed by Bill Mitchell as a 1961 show car called the Mako Shark, or more appropriately, the XP755 concept car. Now, I don't have much interest in Corvettes after about 1972, but there was another part of this museum that I found most definitely intriguing. In the early morning hours of February 12th, 2014, a massive sinkhole appeared and swallowed up a number of Corvettes inside the Sky Dome. The museum has quite a few interactive exhibits showing exactly what all happened and how the cars were retrieved out of the bottom of a 35 foot deep sinkhole. It's still fired up. <laughs> all of the Corvettes that fell in survived except one. It was a 2009 model and it marked the one and a half millionth Corvette to ever roll off the assembly line. Vicki and I finished up our tour in the Sky Dome but we still had a few minutes to spare before we needed to go down to ATM. So we decided to stop by this little place next door that had a massive private collection of antique, classic, and muscle cars, some of which are for sale. Now, like I said, I very much enjoy early Corvettes, but try five Chevys and muscle cars? Now that's my thing. And even though I'm not in the market to buy anything today, it never hurts to look.
Once we got done touring the place and taking a look at all the cars that were there for sale and on display, something else caught my eye. I've always wanted a neon Chevrolet clock. And Vicki knows this. She managed to sweet talk the owner into a good deal on this one. So we finished up our little shopping spree at the Corvette Museum and headed south in the old Suburban. Now the whole reason we're down here in Bowling Green, Kentucky is to meet up with the owners at ATM Innovations. They have a carburetor for me to pick up and they also want to talk to me about a private label line of carburetors built specifically to my specifications. Now keep in mind, I have no formal education. Everything I know about carburetors and fuel systems has been self-taught. I got started at about six or seven years old playing with the carburetor on my grandfather's push mower. Now imagine today a seven-year-old child playing with a screwdriver sitting next to a lawnmower. I was fascinated with turning the idle down as low as I could and then adjusting the low speed mixture setting to get the best throttle response and to get the engine to rev as quickly as possible. Who would have thought a kid sitting next to a lawnmower playing with a carburetor would lead to this? Regardless of how old I am and how old I feel, when I'm working on a carburetor, I still feel like that seven-year-old boy, filled full of that same excitement I had to hear an engine run a little bit crisper, perform a little bit better, and have a little bit better throttle response. Over the last couple of years, I've taken to YouTube to try and help people to diagnose drivability problems that they associate with the carburetor. But most of the time, the problems associated with the carburetor aren't the carburetor's fault at all. Financially, I've never had the ability to just throw money at a problem and hope it goes away. You have to pay close attention to details, which is why Tim and Angela at ATM have each and every customer fill out a tech sheet so that they can not only build a custom carburetor for everyone's application, but also to help their customers correct any mixed matched parts that can cause drivability problems or poor performance of their carburetors before the carburetors are ever bolted to the customer's engine. Now race cars typically idle and go wide open throttle, nothing in between. But street cars like my Malibu or Billy's Mustang, that's a different story. If you've ever been around anything that I've had my hands on, you know that they're tuned very well. I take a lot of pride in tuning and assembling my own carburetors exactly the same way that they take pride in tuning and assembling the carburetors here in Bowling Green, Kentucky at ATM Innovations. Not only do they have the parts available to build and repair just about any carburetor you can imagine, but the employees that work there have many, many years combined experience and detailed documentation of different carburetors that they've built over the last 30 or 40 years. This, along with strict quality control measures, helps to ensure that you not only get a good working carburetor, but also a beautiful looking carburetor as well. Now, one thing I like is chrome and polish. So Tim took a few minutes to show me how their tumble polisher cleans up the main bodies, which are available either polished or with a black protective coating. Now together, we're getting ready to run some really special carburetors through this shop. But today there's one carburetor specifically that's special to me that I plan on taking home with me. But it's not for my Malibu or for any of the other vehicles in our family. This one is for a friend of mine and I plan on hand delivering it to him tomorrow as soon as I get back to Ohio. As you all may have seen in an earlier video on my channel, a close friend of mine was involved in a tragic accident at Brown County Dragway in Indiana. CJ's carburetor was demolished in the accident. When I realized the carburetor could not be repaired, I reached out to Tim and Angela at ATM and explained the situation. And together we made arrangements to get CJ Buckner's Raggedy Ann Mustang a brand new ATM carburetor. Does it have your logo on it? No. It don't? No. Why not? No. I disassembled CJ's old 1050 quick fuel carburetor and recorded exactly what jets and air bleeds were in the carburetor so that the guys at ATM could hit the ground running with a brand new replacement. New carburetor for Raggedy Ann. <laughs> it turns out this is the very first brand new carburetor that CJ has ever owned. He's always bought carburetors used or pieced something together to get by. During the process of rebuilding Raggedy Ann 
he had an old dominator setting on the engine just to keep dirt out. But this new ATM carburetor definitely gives CJ some incentive to keep moving forward. All right, everybody, we are back. We had a great trip down to Bowling Green, Kentucky. We had a fantastic time. Everybody down there was really nice. Huge shout out to Tim and Angela with ATM Innovations and uh, for everything they do to help us and also what they're doing to help CJ. That was the very first time he's ever had a brand new carburetor of his own, like built for his car. So he was very appreciative of that, and I am as well. You know, when we started out, um, the first 1050 uh, carburetor that Billy had on his S10 when it was nitrous, uh, I built it out of parts that I had laying around and bought and scrambled and scratched around and found some decent stuff. and. Uh, I tuned it and made it work from nothing. It just, it was just a bunch of parts that I had scrounged up and, you know, that's how we all start out. And, uh, you know, CJ is, uh, he's always done very well with what he has. He's just like I am. He's always made do with what he's got and found a way to make it work. And, um, I don't really feel like I'm worthy of whatever you call this that's going on here with my YouTube channel. And I don't know what he, I don't even know what you call this, but um, I struggle a little bit. I don't feel like I'm worthy of it. Uh, and um, everything that comes with it. But I told CJ the other day, as difficult as it is for me to come to terms with um, everything that's going on, you know, um, and not feeling worthy of it. Uh, it helps me, uh, tremendously to be able to help other people, like to use the position that I am in, whether I deserve it or not, if I can use the position that I'm in to help people and do good things, that makes me feel better. So even though I don't feel I'm worthy of it, if I'm able to help other people, it makes me feel better. So anyway, this week is going to be busy, busy, busy. Uh, my new headers showed up today for the Malibu or yesterday, actually from American racing headers. They're here, uh, still waiting on a camshaft and lifters. I haven't seen those yet, but I haven't looked yet. I've been gone. So <laughs> I'll have to look around here and see if anything showed up, but Bob's got the small block for Vicky 64 C10, bolted on the dyno and we're going to fire it up tomorrow and if all goes well we'll make a couple pulls on it and i might do a little tuning on it so i got to get ready to do that tomorrow uh up at the machine shop and then we're going to get started on putting my short block together for the malibu and maybe the cylinder heads um let's see what else have we got going on this week once we get that engine uh back from bob's I'll probably have Kenny and Jeremy go ahead and start working on putting it in the 64 and get that project out of the way. Uh, I've got possibly a set of heads coming this week for the 55s 400, uh, the double hump heads from TrickFlow. Uh, waiting on a call from Pee Wee tomorrow to see when those heads will be done. Um, I'm hoping this week. Uh, then we can start putting the 55s engine together. But the most important thing I've got going on right now is getting the old Malibu put back together because it's got to be at PRI in about two weeks. And I would really like to have some time to dyno that engine up at Bob's and try and tune it in a little bit naturally aspirated before we put it down in the car and take it to PRI. So we've got a very busy week ahead of us. Should be plenty of content to make this week if I can get it all recorded, film everything, and edit it all and still get a little bit of sleep. Oh boy, I've did done I it now. <laughs> you started without me. I did, didn't I? So it wasn't an accident. I thought you were busy in there screwing around making turkey cookies. Well, I was, but then I was like, I bet he's going to forget to say this and this. And oh that. God, here we go. <laughs> so what did is you, it? Did you tell everyone when like the unveiling of the new line of carburetor options is? No, I don't even know myself for sure, but I think it's going to be at PRI. Yeah. I mean, that's the plan. And we're still doing a giveaway this month for a brand new mm -hmm. ATM carburetor. Every 
order, order. Yep. that's made from November oh, 1st. Oh boy, for all this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> November 1st through the 30th. And then, um, so then December 1st, we will draw a winner out of all those orders. For a brand new ATM carburetor, 4150, gas or E85, whichever you guys mm -hmm. prefer. So that's still going on for November. Got a few days left of that, right? Yeah. What, today's the 20th, so yeah. Yeah, so we got a few days Home left. Home stretch, but, um, but I figured after our trip, like, we should let everybody know, because everybody's going to say, when can I get one of these? Well, that is true, I guess. It's coming up soon, so the plan, talking to Tim and Angie, they really want to have these on display at PRI so people can see them and see what the options are going to be. Right, and we've got... We've got some different options. Like not everybody's gonna want exactly a carburetor that I've had set up for my Malibu or the Mustang. Mm -hmm. And right now the two that I wanna get out first is for a stock bottom end 302 for the Mustang that I set up for Billy's uh, red Mustang. Mm -hmm. I wanna get that one. Uh, and then I've got a 750 E85 and a 750 gas carburetor that is set up really nice for like the Malibu mm -hmm or the dart mm -hmm. so those two it's are going to like be your preference like how you would do it yeah but not everybody's going to want exactly that mm -hmm. carburetor so there's going to be a line of old man's garage carburetors that you can buy and you can stipulate it however you want it like personally built for your combination or you can get an omg ss carburetor signature series yeah signature <laughs> series god <laughs> So that's coming up. We're going to try to unveil that at PRI. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they should um, be able to have them on their website. You'll either be able to call in or order online. And yeah, you'll order direct from ATM. Yep. And they'll get you taken care of. You just tell them what you need. And uh, you let me know if they give you any flack. <laughs> so <laughs> it's looking like um, like mid December then, when people can probably start, you know, after PRI. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to give them a date. Mm. That's not up to us. That's up to ATM when okay. they're ready. I wouldn't. <laughs> we'll just say after PRI. After PRI. Yeah. Okay. Are we done? Um. Gosh. Harley's going to come into all this to fold tomorrow and more orders and more and more and more. The stuff just keeps rolling in every week. Be That's patient. what you wanted. I know. Just be patient and know that we're not as fast as Amazon, but we're getting out stuff as quick as we okay, can. Okay, I do have something I want to add. What? Please, folks, when you make your order, make sure that the address is correct. Oh. Make sure that you've got the right name. Here's what happens. Oh, my God. Let There's about say. a billion freaking emails in there. <laughs> and they're like, oh, my God, I sent the wrong address. I mean, how do you send the wrong no, address? what happens is in Shopify, there's this, like, feature where it autofills. So you start typing your address, and then it just guesses and autofills. And that happens sometimes. And you got to, like, look at what... Because you got to yeah, stop please, the Yeah, please, because <laughs> you guys are making a hell of a mess for us to clean up here. And the emails, and Miss Harley's pulling her hair out. <laughs> Vicky said her hair's falling out. <laughs> All right, can we go now? Wait, um... Oh. Uh, wait, I know there's something else. Keep ignoring the scam bots in the freaking comments. I block at least it's six a every day. every day. And each, every day there's still somebody who says, I think I won something. We never, never, never give anything away in the comments on YouTube. Never, ever. ever. So don't believe it. If you see that you got a reply and it even looks like his logo, it's not us. Is that it? Um... Oh, can we talk about the Christmas lights? Oh, come on. <laughs> so, people... Look, make this quick. Lights under Louisville, it was amazing. I highly recommend it. It takes less than 30 minutes to drive through. But and if you got something with a sunroof, that's the ticket for oh, the kids because yeah. they can poke their little noggins up through the top. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. I, I honestly, I would have, if we weren't in a hurry to get on to our next destination, I would have paid and gone through it a second time just because it was Are you so out of your mind? Yeah, I would have gone through it twice. It was I would have so gone through the Corvette Museum twice. I don't know about them freaking <laughs> Christmas lights. It was really Listen, cool. that Corvette Museum was a deal. 18 bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. Well, the drive through light show was 39 bucks for a car full, so... It, we paid $40 for that? All right, I mean, as long as you're happy. <laughs> we had a good time. It was really nice. There was only one time I wanted to kill you, and that's when you ran us, almost ran us out of gas. Off the 70... I don't know. Well, I don't know what road it was, but... Like, we had dinner, and I came out, and Vicky's like, when we come out of the restaurant, you get to drive, or I'll drive, and you get to edit. And the first thing we need to do is get gas. I, that's what I said. I was like, we need to get gas first. But and you then didn't. We forgot. No, we no, no, forgot no. And I forgot. No, 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 no. I didn't forget. I was editing. It, there was no we. You forgot. 
and then you start looking for an exit to get gas. Well, it'd be nice if you, you're the one with free hands over there. I'm driving in the dark. So instead of you, okay, so she forgot to get gas. Let me see what's next. No, you didn't I was do that. editing. I didn't even know that you forgot to get gas. You knew that we forgot to get gas. <laughs> I'm supposed to know. You forgot to get gas while I'm over there editing. I'm in my own little I world. I already verbalized that we've got to get gas, and you did not attempt to help. So I'm trying to drive and read in the dark to see the exit signs, the one that said gas ahead, and I got off one exit too soon. Okay, so here's my suggestion. From now on, when you're on the interstate and you're needing gas, only go to the exits where there's a great big sign sticking way up in the air. That means there's gas right at the exit. You and Tommy and Billy all have the same thing going on. You guys, you see a sign that says there's a gas station at that exit, but you, you don't pay any attention to the mileage away from the exit. Like, it'll say 26 miles, that direction. That's the little details that you guys miss. Are we done now? Yeah. Ha, ha, ha.